Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, we finally get a multiplayer fighting game, but it's not the one that we were promised or the one that you were hoping for. And GLX OSD is no more. It is practically deceased. Or is it? Question mark. Virtual programming does us a favor. How sweet of them. And fanboys continue to live in a fantasy world. I wonder if Frodo will share his weed. 6,000 games released in 2017 alone. Meanwhile, Valve gives you the trust talk. And there's another Minecraft shootery type game because we really needed another one of those. Mm, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, doing all this nightmare fuel with nothing but penguin sauce joined by a man... <gasps> From Finland, one master's thing. Not from Finland. Oh, in oh. Finland, is that how it works? In Finland. In Finland. So, yeah. so, so, soon to be exiting Finland. Oh, expatriating and uh, from the island. There. Hello. Yeah, so this is one Pedro. <laughs> Top of the morning, to you, lads. Oh, see, he's already oh, picking. That's the wrong island. He sounds just like the natives, <laughs> and together with Shat Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form the last, most important bit of cocaine roll drawn. Before we get started, lads, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Quick and simple, kind of learned out that this prosumer audio level shit that we're slowly um, migrating to, wicked expensive. All right, um, we're getting there. One, one more week. I I get a story. Oh, you can go back and listen to the VOD. Um, I've told the story about the Amazons. Also, I do apologize about the clicky durable. I ordered a quiet durable. It's part of that order. And, um, yeah, that, that's getting on my nerves editing video. So I, one more week, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what is up J baby? How is it at five o'clock in the morning? Cause you're such a badass. I mean, like I said before, the city seems so empty. She's saying that she loves me. I, I, I gotta, I gotta catch a plane at like two in the two in the afternoon. So I'm, if, if I can make it through the first flight, I would absolutely love to be able to sleep through the eight hour leg. Because that's the one I really want to skip. Uh, <laughs> but for now, for now, everything's almost packed up. I just got to clean this place up mm. and then leave. What, 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 what around... about this guy over <laughs> over here? <laughs> around these parts, I got a new vape thingy. Uh, I've been messing around with the laptop a little bit more. I've managed to get almost 10 hours of battery life out of that uh, HP Elite book I got off eBay. So, yeah. <laughs> Sounds truly horrifying. Um, so, I, I think there's definitely one thing we need to get just a little bit extra out of this week and every single week. I, maybe it'll make it all the way through 2017. And that's a horse. Yeah, I mean, the horse seems to be... Uh... Wheeling and dealing in all sorts of random currency speculation is probably trying to make a neat little profit. It's the Steam Linux. Updated. Oh, oh, all right. So, unofficial Steam sales. So we we mentioned this last week. Um, Steam had uh, enabled some new currencies, um, and that has sort of backfired because, as it turns mm -hmm. out, consistent pricing is anathema to Steam's actual like modus operandi um so there, there there were some depending on what currency you were at some some games dropped by about 30 percent uh some uh some current some games jumped up really really expensively uh because as it turns out um people like to price their games differently in depending on their region and i know there's a reason behind this i mean 50 euros and 50 dollars mean really different things to depending on what country you live in and so saying well it's it's only whatever amount for a game may mean the difference between you know having a fun time over the weekend and not getting groceries mm -hmm. that said it would be mm -hmm. really 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 lovely if you know you could just standardize on a price and be like yeah no it's like 60 usd and then we'll do the unit conversion from there i don't know but, man uh, uh, yeah uh, that's wrong. Uh, was it was kind of looking at this and one of the things that yeah i kind of went of course they did it, i wanted to almost said retaliated is what uh publishers did immediately jacked their prices up to um 
compensate for people having regional pricing. You, you've been dealing with this. Both of you have been dealing with it from mm -hmm. Canada and you were in Euro and now you're on the GBP. And now but, pounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, but like uh, you, you, Valve, uh, even when they're trying to do the right thing, they managed to cock it up. <laughs> and it, I think the most egregious uh, example in this case was one of the games that came down, I think it was GTA V, that at, for a very small window, it was like 98 cents American because well, the price conversion to, I think it was Argentinian shekels. Well, well don't, don't, don't <laughs> no. cry for me, Argentina, because uh, Injustice <laughs> 2 was 60% marked up. Metal Gear Solid 5 was 185% marked up. Mm -hmm. That's uh that's pretty rough if you if you want to go run some people down with your vehicle. Um oh no, sorry. Yeah. Uh, our, what yeah, I, our, it was not, it uh, came down to uh, 94 Poland. colonies and about no, 17 po po cents USD for GTA 5 in Costa Rica, not Argentina. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I was po awful. Uh, Poland got screwed. Apparently that's I'm not sure if this is the EU notification but if, uh a fifty four hundred percent price increase uh, <laughs> for uh, for some games. Like they they really didn't plan this one out all that well. No, it's uh, typical Steam. They fucking rock and roll did something and let everything catch on fire. Then in the upcoming months, they'll definitely roll back out and do that. And Foxy points out in chat realm right now, where AUD man, no dollar dues. Yeah, that is like the most dick thing. I was like, no, I enjoy paying 120 AUD for a $90 Steam card. And, uh, grr. That's uh, messed up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what you gotta do. There's, there's gonna be some... I wonder if it's gonna eventually get to the point where it's gonna be cheaper to, like, go to the US, buy a bunch of Steam cards from the drugstore, and then fly back to Australia. Dude, I got to the like point that, with uh, some Adobe software, and they recently... Oh, yeah, with uh, Cre Creative Suite. It was, yeah, cheaper to go to, fly to the US. To the yeah, yeah, buy it and fly back, and you still get... It's just, well, you gotta flip those bits upside <laughs> down. New Steam client, beta. Little itsy-bitsy, teeny-tiny fix. It's a workaround. Uh, launch failure on certain titles that included outdated Steam folks. Uh, redistributable redistributable English fin libraries. Uh, I'm assuming just old titles were not launching, Pedro. I didn't have any issues. I've never encountered this. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, you've been using the NVIDIA proprietary drivers for the most part. <laughs> yeah, I like shit to work, uh, and... man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just that everyone who has tried to even start the, the client itself, let alone games... Uh, as had to deal uh, on the open source drivers, that is, as had to deal with outdated libraries in the runtime. Uh, Steamworks sometimes wouldn't pick up because, oh, your version of glibc is far too recent uh, compared to the one that the runtime is using. So you have to go in and get rid of those libraries in the runtime. And all of a sudden, oh, it now works magically. So Valve have apparently, I guess, uh, they felt the uh, slight kick in the bum that was Ike putting that snap together and saying, look, we're fixing your runtime for you. How'd you like that, Apples? Uh, I was just but, about to yeah, ask you if Solus would fix it. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's I, I, uh, I, I, part I, I of the reason love, that I we talked about last comments. week. There, 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 there's there's a comment in here because the, the other thing that got fixed in this update because you know DirectX 12 is the future apparently there's some overlay <laughs> crashes for DirectX 12 one, one of the suggestions in the comment is just reinstall Windows <laughs> <laughs> gotta, 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 gotta love that I'm, I'm, I'm hey, I mean you, you start to give them a little bit of shite and then you're like he, he, he might have a point. It is Windows, so that's probably right. <laughs> yeah. uh, it could definitely be an issue. So, uh, Green Light is gone. That's the song, but it has not helped, really, when you think about it. No, no it didn't. See, uh, there was at least the... Well, the suggestion or the teeny tiny excuse 
or whatever you want to call it, that some games just wouldn't make it on Steam because they couldn't get enough votes to get past Greenlight. Well, Valve decided, you know what, we want more shovelware on our store, and lo and behold, they accomplished it. They got rid of Greenlight, and they basically said, oh, look, you give us money, and you get your game up on Steam. So, uh, as we reported earlier in the year, there had been, like... um, Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! And as we report, you just slow that shit down, man. Don't, that's punching <laughs> above our weight. <laughs> this, this, we talked oh, oh, about. Oh, it. Welcome to CNN, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we talked about it that, that, that there had been over three thousand games released on Steam up until that point, which was more than the last however many years combined. Well, now there's we're coming 6, to the end of the year, and. Yep, 6,000 games released on Steam this year alone. That's over the past 10 years to 2015. That's how many games came out on Steam as a whole. Well, so that now, should now, give in, you a little sp- bit of perspective. Sp- sp- speaking of speaking of reporting, I have, I have some breaking news for you, Pedro. If you if you mm-hmm. let something go from a height, it will accelerate to lo- the largest gravitational mass. Yes, that's called terminal vo- velocity. Listen, at the end of the <laughs> day, sit back, take that shot. No, 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 you know, that, Steam Direct called, accelerated the influ- uh, influx of bullshit, allowing Steam to just like rubber stamp everything that's coming through right now. Everything. That mm-hmm. we also got to think. We also got to think about this. You know, Unity getting way too fucking easy to use. Okay. That, that could have yeah. issues mm-hmm. because you got to keep in mind a lot of this shovelware that we're giving shit legitimately giving shit a lot mm-hmm. of it's not malicious you know it's teenagers using free unity engine or maybe the smart ones are using um, unreal engine 4 and th- they're going to burn a hundred dollars of allowance money to say they got a mm-hmm. game on steam and you know what uh you you guys give me your feedback on this Pedro Jordan. i would have done the same shit back in the day absolutely oh I, I I don't think I'd necessarily put it on Steam, but I'd definitely be making like little 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 bullshit games and just be like, "Hey, man, I'm a game programmer." Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> no, you're 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 up you're absolutely you're absolutely right. Uh, but it the 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 thing the thing is that um, by Steam attempting to be the more open storefront and attempting to automate curation and what have you, or offload it to influencers, streamers, us. <laughs> Um, you're just mm-hmm. gonna get lots and lots of shit. It's unavoidable. Um, it, the it's it's the same thing that happened with home movies, right? The second you could like get a camcorder for a reasonable price, well, people were making movies like crazy. L- look at the nonsense that we're doing yeah. right now. I mean, it used to be you had to get a radio <laughs> show, and now it was like dance monkeys dance on the internet. We just got a magic box that does it. Even back in my day, it wasn't really with gaming so much, but uh. Absolutely, like making a web zone on, you know, Angel Fire or GeoCities. Yeah, yeah. So, they, they, yeah. they made it. They made it easy, and now everyone wants to do it. Yeah. And I mean that that's fair. That's creative expression. As as soon as soon as literacy became a thing, and people learned how to write, people started writing all sorts of crap. The, every every time there's a, there's a new medium <laughs> that is that has a barrier for entry, uh, that then has that barrier for entry taken away means that there's going to be an influx of crap and that that's that's just human nature i don't, I don't think there this this isn't news yeah. and i can see valve's point because they themselves said oh we never thought that the whole uh visual novel thing would pick up as much as it did but hey the, the moment that they lower that barrier for hen- uh barrier for entry and those Bar- barrier for hentai right yes yeah. steam yeah, they are very, very popular. So I guess I can see that. It's just that there is a very clear distinction between a genre that you never thought was even a thing because no one in your office likes those games and, you know, shovelware. Acid flipped shovelware. Mm-hmm. There's a difference there. Mm-hmm. Well, so then you, you teased us in the in the rundown. There's a there's a fighting game mm-hmm. coming, sort of, kind of, not well, really. I, I got a little excited about it, man. I, I, we mentioned it maybe last week and all that. We were talking about Clash of Robots, or it might have been a week before. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know what? It doesn't look like complete gobshite. No, it doesn't. And it has multiplayer. And that's something online multiplayer to be more exact about that. Mm-hmm. Cross-platform multiplayer. Look, that's even better. 
And I was thinking about it because, well, you know, most modern 64-bit, any uh, any 64 processor, so good luck finding that elusive <laughs> critter. What I like about this, uh, Clash of Robots, um, it's priced to sell at $9.99, and I'm not going to say I was excited yeah. about it, but I was definitely robot curious on that one. Then, you know... I had to break it to myself. I was like, no, I'm just kidding. Because this is a fee-to-win mobile game that's completely free in the Google Play Store. And I don't know about you two. I'd like a little bit of a warning on this bullshit. Because <laughs> here's the thing. When you got something that's pay-to-win, fee-to-play, anything like that. and it's, we, We've played these games in the past. When that's built into the core mechanic, the DNA, it doesn't matter if you just slap it all in and you give everybody everything and say, well, here's the final price and that's fair. All right, technically that's fair. I don't have a problem with that. The problem is it's going to be a shit game because the game was built from the ground up to take advantage of the whole EA bullshit they had with Star Wars. You know, it's yeah. to trigger the... Uh, that. That's the game is to get more shit. And when you already have everything... You see what the game is, uh, boring. Maybe I'm just too much of an optimist, but um, it's uh, you'd think that a developer who was making a fighting game, even for Android, littered with pay to win bullshit as it is, uh, that they wouldn't make a fighting game pay to win. And assuming that they have some microtransactions on Android because they have to, they have to make the money somehow. Probably just the whole cosmetic thing. Uh, I, I'm hoping. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I, th I think you got, you got to be a little bit more of a negatron and less of an optimist prime. <laughs> well, ultimately, at the um, end of the day, I think one of the things you got to think about, Jordan, is how in depth of a fighting game could you make that was meant for mobile devices? Yeah, that, and that's the other thing because I, I remember when we were talking about it last week. Um, it was like there, there's like RPG elements to it or something. You like queue up stuff and then fight. I I'm I'm not sure. And on, honestly, with 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 the knowledge that it's just a mobile port, I've kind of lost interest. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with your last point though. Um, in, in the in the show notes, where there really should need there really needs to be like a, yeah, this this is also available on the Play Store uh, filter for uh, for games. Right, and the main reason I yeah. say that is because a lot of it is a direct mobile port. Now, we've seen some developers, uh, developers that we interviewed on uh, Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Their Steam version yes. of their mobile game, they went back and reworked. They added new stuff to the desktop. Mm -hmm. They did it right, but they, they are less than the 1%. Most of it is just straight boop, dump, get it on. There you go. And sometimes they don't even bother trying to check if the game actually works on the platforms that they're advertising on the Steam store. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a a driving game. I can't remember what it's called. It's like Racing Redline or Redline Racing. Oh, God. Like yeah, I know. Yep. That. Yeah, it's a Unity game. And the moment you start it up on Linux, it just freaks the fuck out and you can't do anything. You can't even see the main menu. It's broken and they're still selling it hmm. well let's talk about something i think everyone watching this show especially people who enjoy our after show and our tuesday and thursday streams dig uh they would be very interested in this and that's the party 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 yeah party 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 uh, this is it's it's you want to have a party it's jackbox party pack three this is from steam db links to all the stuff in our show notes so uh about four days ago this popped up. There's uh, there might be a uh, Linux depot for the Jackbox Party Pack Three. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a game targeted at streamers for or essentially for That's audience a bunch participation. Of mini -game. You can, you, yeah, you, a bunch of mini games with a bunch of audience participation stuff. You can play it on your cell phone. You go to you go to their website. You enter like a, a, a game code that gets shared from your favorite streamer, and you can participate with them. And it's like trivia stuff, and it it party it's, it's, it's essentially just a bunch of mini party games and uh they typically have a really good sense of humor um it's there I've, I've seen streamers play this and it's it actually seems pretty fun i was wondering if this would ever come to linux and it may just there, there there's no size on the depot there's minimal amount of info nothing has been directly announced so 
we, we don't know if they're just testing some stuff, seeing if it's even worth it. But yeah. this would be really, really fun for the after show and would enable us to yeah. have a higher degree of audience participation that um, we otherwise couldn't have. Right. And the way that works is, you know, you can just download the app for free and you can participate. Mm-hmm. That's the you thing. Can, not, you can do it through a browser too. Right. Not everyone has to shell out the twenty four ninety nine. And no, I think that is really cool. It's encrypted, no size on the depot. Uh, please, that would be fun for a Tuesday stream or a Thursday stream and after show. Definitely throw that in because you can get a bunch of people in those yeah. games. Like a ridiculous yeah. amount. And I mean, we already have a bunch of people queuing up for the after shows and it's under the promise of rocket cars, sure. But yeah, maybe do some fibbage, do some uh, whatever Jackbox includes. Jackbox. I'd be down for that. Uh, that's it's a my thing. Jack in a box. So, um, <laughs> Dire Wolf. Woof, woof. Yeah, speaking, oh, well. speaking, of, speaking of party games, uh, this is uh, another one that you can toss on the after show pal. Uh, available winter 2017. This is basically um, the an electronic version of Werewolf or Mafia. It's a party game you may have played with your friends if they are sufficiently nerdy. Or, uh, no, that wasn't a burp. Um, <laughs> you you were bored at camp one day. Um, Holy fuck. But, their, their entire thing is like no actual gameplay, no screenshots. No, just Well, because the, cause there is there is minimal gameplay. Most of what the game is is a conversation. If you haven't played it before, a basically, uh, you people get randomly determined to be like the werewolf. Oh, I've played forever. I, I know exactly what it yeah, is. Yeah. I'm just well, giving them shit no, on no, there. I'm, 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 I'm just saying for the sake of those who in the audience who don't. Oh, okay. Know. All right. Right on. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, every, everyone gets a role and you have to sort of figure out who's who by talking to everyone else. And eventually the goal is to find the werewolf or the mafia or whoever. And that that's the game. And so they, they slapped a digital front end in front of it. They're probably going to add a couple additional features to make it a little more video gamey. But uh, again, it's, it's just, it's just a party game. Um, you got to use your logic and deductive reasoning. And I get, could be something mm-hmm. useful for the after show or like a Tuesday mm-hmm. stream or a Thursday stream or something. Because, I mean, I, I kind of like this idea that, like, we're, we're getting more digitized versions of board games that exposes them to a brand new audience. Uh, especially because social gaming isn't really a thing that's been explored too much. You got, like, first-person shooters, you got strategy games and MMOs that all have a social element to them. Mm-hmm. But not an actual game where socialization is the main mode of gameplay. Um, this would be interesting. Uh, this for this is a bit more involved though for like a live stream right Mm -hmm. for sure yeah you actually have to pay attention to what everyone else is doing and why try to figure out why they're doing it it's uh it's those kinds of games that i always like the concept of i just never really got into the whole social aspect because i got bored because i don't like people because you have no friends got it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that too <laughs> but there was a point in time where i did have friends and whenever something like this came up eh, well maybe that's why uh, I have no don't, don't worry your little heart about it because it's time to sit back and make your h2 o face no oh, no oh, oxygen oh. included or oxygen not included automation uh, and if we are to take that little thumbnail on the side there uh, for its word, it, the subtitle is Upgrade Available Now. <laughs> so it is a an early access game where you have to build a base uh, and you have to manage the levels of oxygen and you have to... Basically, it's... Imagine the XCOM base building aspect expanded... To be the entire game. If that, you know, didn't immediately it's... tell you to run for the hills, well, then this might be a game for you. Because honestly, it's, I don't. It's really Dwarf Fortress enjoy. in space. I, I, I don't like these sorts of games. I really don't. Uh, now, one of the things that uh, bugged me was uh, I was looking at it. It's like, oh, oxygen not included. Windows and Mac. Why are Linux? Where's Linux? I'll tell you where Linux is. It's, uh, as Foxy pointed out, same guys who developed the Don't Starve Together and um, the Linux Depot is there. Yeah, it's there. A Clay Entertainment. Yeah. 
but I don't know if it's yeah, populated they, they or not. Developed Shank and Shank Two. Take and, this with uh, a grain of salt. What I'm saying, because at the end of the day, I mean, this will come to Linux. There's a Linux depot for it. It's just not yeah. lit up right now. Mark of the Ninja. That's mm. the one I was part- yeah. thinking of. That's thing. Okay. Um, it's not Tannenbaum's nine. It's Tannenberg's, and oh. it's out for your face. Tannenberg. Yep. So uh, you may remember our favorite um, World War One shooter for Linux that we actually never played. But then yeah, again, there are yeah, Doom. Many yeah, as Doom's a great Spike game. Bolt. <laughs> Doom, Doom's based on a true story. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is Verdun, or in this specific case, this is Tannenberg uh, Eastern Front, and well, it's the Verdun engine uh, with the Ver- all of the Verdun things. It's just a different sort of uh, map pack, as it were, and much like last time, it is still multiplayer only. And as someone who fondly remembers the old old days of Medal of Honor: Light Assault, when EA wasn't as scummy as they are right now. Uh, I would very much like to see the single-player campaign. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, one of the biggest selling points of Medal of Honor Allied Assault back in the day was the multiplayer aspect, and I did very much enjoy the multiplayer on that. But the bulk of my time with that game was still spent in the single-player because it had a proper campaign. It went on for several hours, and it was good, and I'd like to see some more of that on Linux without the online requirement. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, the people who play Verdun are, are going to be the same one. It, it has a legitimate fan base to the casual yeah. outsider. I'm going to be honest and say this looks like it should have been part of Verdun or some DLC for that other game. I don't know if it justifies its own individual, you know, seventeen ninety nine price tag. It, it's a different... Uh, <laughs> It's a difference, really. It's got all a, I can a say, whole man. new, yeah, sure. Foxy's sh- uh, shouting at me in Discord because it's loads more than a map pack for Verdun. Exactly, I like that. I said, some people. I mean, <laughs> you're going to have like the people who defend ballistic. It's just like oh, I love yeah. this game, yeah. <laughs> Strider. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's no, it's, it's, it's a... definitely not ah. a cup of tea. Ah, wow, echo feedback. It's it's another World War Two shooter game. It's just World War One. I, 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 World World War. Okay, fair enough. World War One shooter. But so I and you know to be I, that kind of nixes my complaint because well it, it's been a long time complaint of mine that World War One hasn't really been explored much in the gaming space. But I mean it's another shooter on Linux. It's trench warfare. We have so many of these right now. The market is super saturated with it, and I'm glad that it has its fan base. But, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not enough to pique my interest. Well, yeah, that's kind of where I fall. I, if you like it, great, man. I mean, go, go go to Raging Clue. Have fun with it. Have a blast with it. It's, yeah, it, it doesn't... I It seems like I played this game back in the late 90s. So... Yeah. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what has a dwindling fan base... Uh, Valve really is trying to get out of the uh, game making market because the few games that they do have they're still running still very much popular one of them is Counter-Strike Global Offensive and lately they have been doing their damnedest to get people to stop playing it kind of like YouTube with the whole demonetization thing Uh, so a couple of um, months ago we talked about an update to the Counter-Strike Uh, global offensive uh, matchmaking system and they said that they were going to try some things over the past uh, over the next few updates from that time and well they did try a few things and most of the people did not like it because people that usually got matched up with people of their actual skill all of a sudden were matched up either against people who were way better than they are or stupidly easy so something was up there and then valve kind of came out it's like yeah so we changed the matchmaking we had we were trying some things with how how many times you're reported as a cheater in a certain match whether or not your cheating is irrelevant everyone can report you if they think you're doing too good i've been the target of that uh it was a long time ago (laughs) uh but now 
they've actually come out and said that uh, we have a new matchmaking system and we're basing it on the trust factor. So the trust factor, besides the whole be uh, how many times you're reported for cheating, how many times you are given kudos in the game for either being really good or actually pulling uh, you know, a win out of your ass during a competitive match, or even what kinds of games you have in your Steam library. Because I was reading through the blog post, it's like, uh, Steam library? How exactly does that affect your matchmaking system with other people? Say you're a YouTuber. So like Pedro, Pe Pedro, at the end of the day, to summarize this, what the fuck's it doing? It is changing how the matchmaking works. <laughs> it is changing how the matchmaking works to pair you against other people that Valve thinks it is uh, that uh, you should. I, I, I guess, I guess maybe maybe the, the Steam library thing could work. Uh, if you have a lot of first-person shooters in your library, uh, they might think, oh, hey, you're someone who plays a lot of first-person shooters and you have a lot of time invested. Maybe you are a high-skill-level person. Or maybe they just don't want... Maybe if you own something like Vendetta Curse of the Ravens Cry, they're like, you have a really shitty taste in games and therefore are a shitty person That's, and no one should play with you. Well, that could also be the case. It That's could look at you and be like, hey, man, you're metal as fuck. You bought that piece of shit? All right, how many hours do you have in it? <laughs> Holy hell. Um... <laughs> I don't know, man. A lot of this still comes across say. as, you know, Valve trying to automate a lot of shit. They really don't have the in-house talent to pull off a lot of this stuff, man. Or to do it properly. Well, match, ma matchmaking is one of those tricky things, though, because <laughs> assessing yeah. assessing skill level is very, very difficult. Especially yeah. Uh, and and it, it, in it, most it, situations, yeah. I'd agree with you, Ven. It's just that here... It's un completely unfeasible to think that Valve would hire thousands of people to do the matchmaking for everyone that's trying to play the game at once. No, 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 Pedro. I said the talent. The talent could be one person. <laughs> Even then, it is a very I, big I, game. I, I mean, given, given, given how around. Valve operates... Look at it like a similarly large game like us. Rocket Cars. Really good at matchmaking. Is it though? <laughs> yeah, it is. If you suck donkey balls at rocket cars, you start getting good at compared to say I don't know, CSGO again, that's its own fucking thing. The type of people who are really concerned about that, they meet up and fucking play. They don't rely on matchmaking. Well, you're always going to rely on matchmaking when you're doing competitive. Sure, you have the five guys you need, you have a team of five, and you go into competitive, but Chances are you're going to be queued up against randos, unless you're doing a tournament. So, yeah, you do need that matchmaking, because if you're paired up against a team of randos that's much better than mm -hmm. you, you're going to get destroyed, and all your awards and all your ranks are going to go down to shitter. Well, here's you another thing to think about. You also want some people in there that are going to force you to get good, too. <laughs> Get good, or uh, get you to pay for the microtransactions, you know, the whole marquee player thing that sure. activision hashtag, to, hashtag uh, five happens. dudes but speaking speaking of military shooters uh the, the this turd comes out of our uh, our good pals at virtual programming this is from the arma 3 twitter they say together with our publishing and qa departments virtual programming have updated the linux mac port to betas to 1.76 including laws of war dlc that makes the multiplayer compatible with windows for a while at least now this this is like the epitome of shit eating grin right this is oh, yeah. the, the lowest bidder we've contracted to toss a bone at Mac and Linux, folks. A shout out multiplayer compatibility for now. You're still a second class citizen. Fuck you, but you should thank us anyways because at least you can play with other people now. It's the, the entire premise behind this is just so bad. It's so toxic. I it it, it hurt it hurt me to think that people are actually supporting this behavior. Because yeah, oh, you know, you know, what? if you're if you're if your multiplayer is broken, sure, whatever. But th th this is just not the way to go about it. It's like, oh yeah, no, we're we're, we're doing you a favor, tossing you a bone. Mm, this isn't you. just broken. This is deliberately broken. Well, but that's the thing with Arma is has it ever been an official game? It's always been an experimental port, right? Yeah, uh, there the, was the, the, that one the, official uh, Arma Tactics that was made by Bohemia, but then again, that was Unity. So, 
So, I, I listen, I don't like virtual programming and all that shit. And they're, they're getting it in sync, but nowhere on the tin does it or has it ever said that it works. This the, the this is this is true, but I I, I get my, my issue is not question, with that. Though. My issue is is with the delivery. Here. <laughs> well, does it have Linux support listed on their Steam store? I don't probably. Know. I, I don't think it does. <laughs> no. Done. Okay, well, take us up. What the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? Uh, you, 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 you gotta love non sequitur arguments. Coming up next, we discuss a fifty thousand line Linux kernel patch. And also StarCraft on my Linux? No. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's... Well, that was a long Steam segment, but before we get any further, we need to thank you guys and you gals. Because you keep making this possible. You... This show... Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, those streams that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's all thanks to you. And by all means, do keep giving us money. Keep Absolutely. There, awesome. There's fantastic ways to give us all sorts of <laughs> currencies or just trade goods if you're so inclined. We actually we actually do need some sheep, some cows, maybe a chicken. Get a, you get a, a rise chicken. Sons and daughters. <laughs> If you got any firstborn sons and daughters, you can make all. Uh, but uh, you can you can support us at uh, LinuxTeamCast.com. Click the support button. All sorts of links there. You can see what they are. Um, maybe, maybe check out the uh, affiliate links or the wish lists if you want to help us out in an easy peasy way. Otherwise, you can head on over to Patreon.com slash LinuxGameCast, where you can get all sorts of good stuff for supporting us, including Discord access. There's there's you can you can link your mm-hmm. uh, Discord to Patreon, get access to the uh, live show chats and all sorts of cool stuff. People post pictures of cloud dicks there. It's fascinating. You know, you, you, you pay a little bit more, you can get access to the show notes. You can make suggestions. You can sort of be a part of the creative process that is Linux Gamecast. It's really awesome. There's a bunch of Patreon exclusive content. You get timed exclusive access to a bunch of our Let's Play videos. We occasionally do some Patreon only streams. It's great. Um, you need to go there and give us lots of money. 103 of you are giving us 201 wet, stinky caches. And that's that. That's just amazing. Uh, it's astounding that yeah. this can even make a, a, a thin dime. <laughs> us coming to you week after week after week. Just talking bullshit. I mean, if you saw that last Steam segment, that was just 100% unadulterated bullshit. Hey, hey don't, 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 don't worry about now. it, man. I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, Pedro won the argument at the end. You just got to go back and watch that. That's one thing you're going to have access to, and I, I got to throw that in, is uh, you get to see the whole show, all the sausage, all the nightmare. That VOD will be available next day. Uh, we do have a wish list. We're still sticking up bits and bobs on the studio, which is like, oh, wow, that got expensive real quick all of a sudden. But anything, anything we want to thank all the lovely people, because Frank is kind enough to roll out his uh, find yeah. upstanding cannibal wool. Your name gets up there if you want. If you don't, that's kind of brilliant. We still love you anyway, and uh, we will gladly take your things. I'm just saying there's a lot of cheap stuff on there right now if you own the fuck wool. Uh Hey, a little bit of reminder. If you're on, if you like the, if you don't like Discord, you don't give two fucks about Discord. You don't have to do anything. Don't worry about it. If you like participating in Discord, mm-hmm. we're going to start doing a lot more stuff with that, especially with like some group chats and stuff like that. Make sure you get the Patreon bot linked up. It takes ten seconds. Uh, Pedro, would you be kind enough to throw that link into Chat Realm for me? That would be awesome. And yes, um, if you get any problems with that, let me know. I'll walk you through it. I walked uh, somebody through it two days ago or yesterday or something like that. It's a piece of cake. Get that done so everything works. So okay. let's get into like, whoa, patches. Patches. We video don't need those patches. stinking patches. All right. <laughs> well, basically, it's uh, well. It's uh, Dave Early. You may know him. He's the one who managed to get the uh, Rad V driver up to parity and up to conformance with the Kronos Group tests in a very short amount of time. 
he has been awesome when it comes to the AMD open source driver development, and he's still doing it. Uh, he pushed a couple of patches. Well, a couple. I say a couple. There were a bunch of them. Uh, there was a lot of work there. He's been working with the AMT, AMD, not AMT. What the hell is AMT? I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's been working with AMD and their open source team uh, to get the new drivers for the Vega cards up and running properly on the Linux kernel. Uh, you may remember a while back there was a... Um, a little bit of a snafu because AMD tried to introduce a hardware abstraction layer to the kernel and Linus basically just looked at that and hit the nope button and there was uh, there were many egos bruised and AMD threw a little bit of a hissy fit but now uh, Dave is actually helping them and well he's got a load of patches and he even provides a little bit of a backstory in the um, in the post and it's an interesting glimpse at the efforts that he and the team at AMD have been um, pulling to basically get the open source drivers to pull a summer and have a Linux-friendly unified code base for the hardware to render things before the display server even starts. Now, he does say that its uh, full support is not there yet, but... Well, uh, I guess that's his uh, reason for saying right off the bat that Linus may very well uh, not accept this. But that turned out not to be the case. Well, that was definitely one of the things, man. I mean, I kind of thought Linus was going to be like, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, even Dave was like, hey, man, you know, this the where it's at currently right now is slightly better than staging. And AMD don't seem to think the accuracy and revalidation of the code's really worth their effort. <laughs> That's his words, not mine. So don't hate on me, <laughs> hate on Dave. Uh, really what Dave was worried about, this not getting into um, set in motion to be in 4.15, was that distributions were going to start carrying their own repo of this. Because this is something you kind of need if you got an AMD card right now. And Dave was 100% correct. But... More to the point, uh, I, I will have lost this bet, hundred <laughs> percent. It's in. It's in. It's in. <laughs> it's hundred percent in. Midas is like, it all actually, right. Actually, I did not see that coming. I very much thought Lydus was going to say, okay, maybe it wasn't going to be his usual uh, <laughs> uh, belligerent self, but he. Uh, I was, if I had to put money on it, I would have said that. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's not coming in because of these specific issues, but nope, it isn't. All the patches are in, so people with Vega cards that are trying to use Linux, you can now. <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're certainly going to be very, very happy. And this is a big freaking patch. A lot of it, too, is just like a bunch of hardware identification, just so that um, the right mm -hmm. hardware will get the right bits of driver code. Um, I can I can understand why Linus would want this in though, just because it number number one it saves a lot of drama. Number two, they base they did a bunch of rearchitecturing and restructuring of it. The hardware access control list is or the hardware extraction layer is gone, um, and yep. it gives them something to work with. It gives people something to report bugs against, especially for something as widely used as GPU drivers. You need to get it out there as quickly as possible to to start fixing bugs and doing validation and whatnot. Yeah. But is this going to be the silver bullet patch that finally makes AMD hardware competitive on Linux? No, no, it's not. Uh, one one can start. only hope because uh, uh, I want to live in this magical moon future where when it comes time to replace the 980, I could look at AMD legitimately and go, I can get that up and running and it's going to be competitive and, and I'm box. not going to spend two or three days getting everything hammered out and kind of keep my finger organs crossed that Feral is going to be able to support the nightmare fuel of changes coming through. But if we're talking three years down the road, riddle me this, gentlemen. Just as an aside, what are the chances, or let's say maybe four years, to make it a little more realistic, a discrete graphic card solution from Intel? That's competitive. I don't think that. I don't. Oh, I don't no. think that's going to happen. Main, <laughs> See, mainly that's just coming. because of the patent nightmare. That is I, coming. The, the, I, I I I don't believe that unless, yeah, unless in, Intel gets some really good lawyers. 
I, I, I don't um, see it coming at all. And, uh, see, in, Intel themselves have said that they are going to be doing uh, discrete GPUs. They did say that they were going to be focused on compute rather than, say, gaming performance. But they said that they would be doing discrete GPUs. So that is coming. I, 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 mean, I, I, would, I would expect something Knight's Corner-esque. But on, Intel says a lot of shit, too. And Intel says a lot of shit, but to the point to the lawyers, <laughs> Intel would have already bought AMD if it wasn't for having to face antitrust shit. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, it's like, oh, you that, hold that, the monopoly. That, that, that and then <laughs> NVIDIA has also put the put the brakes on their uh, their GPU efforts as well. But you know, I I would absolutely love an out of the box solution that I can just pop a GPU in my box. Linux recognizes it, up and running. New latest version of Vulkan, OpenGL, mm -hmm. just play games at good. At, that is the well, dream. As good performance as we can we as we can expect under linux but you know speaking of OpenGL, that thing that we you use to occasionally determine hey is this, is this even running well uh, is, is, is hey, man. That uh, i mean before the days of steam overlay this <laughs> was kind of the bee's knees uh glx osd and unfortunately it has been discontinued uh basically this kind of boils down dude's busy in university and he doesn't have time to work on it also, you know, he's kind of got a point. GLX OSD, a little bit outdated. You know, Wayland starting to become a thing and doesn't have any support for pure Wayland applications due to the reliance on X11 APIs. And there, uh, it kind of makes a point that it's a, it's a crapshoot to keep this thing up and running in the first place. And I think it's really important I, I, yeah. to point out. And I really do is, you know, this guy, you see some projects like i'm thinking about not continuing it guys here's here's my paypal thing you know maybe no, this guy's just tapping out guys i, I gotta I, I i get to do this you know education thing and if jordan yeah. is because it's open do you think anybody's going to pick it up though well he says he's willing to foist ownership over to anyone who's willing to take it over but it's a lot of work and he says in that post like there's a lot of game specific stuff that you need to do because there isn't really like a standard OpenGL implementation, uh, you, 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 even in between, even in between like games on the same drivers, you're gonna have to run it. You're gonna run into different problems, and you're gonna need to have uh, game specific code for it. So it's definitely a lot of work. And you know, this this is the common death knell of these projects. But you know, real life has to take priority. Uh, it would it would be wonderful if you could just have funding to work on whatever open source passion project you have uh, going, but unfortunately yeah. e e even with something like patreon it's not really feasible you gotta eat and especially if you're in school or whatnot you gotta you gotta focus on getting that shit done so you can get your piece of paper get your doctorate or your master's or whatever realize oh no i just got a doctorate in computer science i could have gotten the equivalent knowledge from dicking around but you know it is what it is just going on google yeah <laughs> but stack it, overflow this is one of those projects degree. that i've <laughs> this is one of those projects that I've been uh, using for a good long while because I'm one of those idiots that still has a big, big wide library. Uh, so every now and again, there's this one game that just doesn't run well and I want to get like an accurate measurement of either the frame times because this does frame timing um, or even just getting teeny tiny little overlay in the corner telling me how many furfs I'm getting. Uh, and it's going away. This is bad. Someone needs to take this up because I want to see someone actually take the frame timing thing because that's one of the issues I still have with GLX OSD is that it introduces a lot of frame latency, which is noticeable because there's input latency and the frame times are stupidly high, like above the 16 uh, millisecond that you know your usual 60 hertz display has so that is something that i've always wanted to see fixed and now it's going you know the developer is going away and the project is going to be stale for a little bit i really want someone to pick this up and actually fix that if anyone out there with a little bit of api knowledge and a little bit of um I don't even care about Wayland right now because, yes, it is coming, but it is still a ways away. So just get what is in there now 
working without adding more latency to the frame timings, that would be awesome. Well, he does kind of have a point, though. I mean, it's going to all be for naught. You know, by probably first or second quarter 2036, Waylon will definitely be a thing. <laughs> and... Well, we're, we're at, at the moment, yes. we're waiting on NVIDIA to get their shit together and play nice with... Yeah, and when Zone NVIDIA and finally right. caves and says, okay, we give up on AGL streams. <laughs> so, Jordan, yeah, uh, the but, Linux community so, got some yeah. really good news, man. Yeah, people lost their collective shits about this, and not for particularly good reason. So, Blizzard, we very rarely have this show up in the show notes. You can click on that link. This is from Battle.net. Uh, there is some updates to uh, StarCraft II, specifically regarding the API. Uh, they have added a rendering. A, they have added the rendering outputs to um, the Linux version. Now, if you don't know what's going on here, uh, Blizzard had released some of the source code for StarCraft II, specifically targeted at AI mm -hmm. development, because um, a very common uh, way to test artificial intelligence is to throw a game of StarCraft at it. And because most AI programmers are using Linux, because why the hell would you write uh, AI using Windows? It would probably want to... It, it would be like that frog thing from the Simpsons Halloween special that Millhouse created. Oh, come on, man. Like, uh, I, I want to do it. Every video. moment I hear this agony. <laughs> code but, blocks. Code blocks but, on Windows, man. That's that's how you do it. But 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 but, but anyways, so this, this shows up. They added to the renderer. Uh, so essentially this lets you hook into it and see what is actually being played. Um, which, you know, for, and if you're, if you don't want to go matrix mode, if you don't want to be like Cypher, uh, you can actually watch your Starcraft units get controlled by your artificial intelligence. But of course, everyone in the Linux community says, well, this means that Blizzard is going to be supporting Linux now. We're going to get Starcraft 2 under the Linuxes. Uh, they're, they're, they're finally going to overturn Stupid years people. of just shitting on the community. And that's, that's not going to happen. It's, listen, this, nope. this is purely self-serving. Blizzard wants people to use StarCraft for AI development because that is a thing that people use it for. Linux is simply a means to an end. I will believe that Blizzard is on board with Linux when I can play Diablo 3 natively. That's that's it. Which is never. I will say this. I mean, to Blizzard's credit, they have modified and fixed some things in games that were having issues with wine. Occasionally, oh yeah, and then they're sometimes they ban people who use wine. wine. Well, support because they don't have to support it, but they'll go. Mm, all right, we'll yeah, make well, that change and make quote it unquote work. support. They're ap they're happy to fix wine issues because guess what? Wine is actively replicating all of those Windows bugs in order to attain that you know degree of compatibility. So fixing wine issues will make your Windows version better. Hmm. Did I just blow your mind? No? Okay. <laughs> no. No, no, you didn't, no. Pedro. No, no, not in the slightest. You, you, you no. can't really do that. We're, we're way too jaded. <laughs> hey, let's but, talk about you know. a Kickstarter. Ooh, it has a demo, yes, at least. let's indeed. It, it, indeed, it has a demo, but more on that later. Uh, see, this is a Nimbatus. Nimbatus, however you want to spell it. Uh, it is uh, currently available on Kickstarter. You can get the... Um, I don't even know what currency this is. But you can get the base game at 14 CHFs. What are those? I don't even know what those are. <laughs> but you can get it. And like every single Kickstarter project we talk about right here on this show, it has a... Oh, they're, 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 they're Swiss so Franks, by the way. This game... Yeah. Uh, in this game, what you um, what you do is you build your own drone and you go around a galaxy exploring planets. And all the planets, as you can see from those little gifts that they have on their page, are destructible. And you also have enemies that go around and big old um, Space Invader style bosses that you have to defeat. It looks that's, that, that, that's my main thing here. It's like I I I I I fucked around with the demo for about five minutes. I'm not sure what the hell it is, but I I, I want to get like that giant laser yeah. octopus thing. That thing that thing gets me hard, man. Yeah, it does uh, look interesting in the way, even though it's like a 2D space exploration game. It does look it 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 has some visual niceties to it. Let's call them that. And 
I was looking at the gifts and I was curious. Okay, let's see what the what the hell this is all about. So I went to download demo and I clicked a button and nothing happened. Oh, this isn't actually a link. So where's the link? Right click on the button, inspect, and I was met with not the actual button itself. There's a teeny tiny underscore below the button that's off in the corner of the page. If you have a 1080p monitor, it's all the way over there. If you have a 4K or UHD monitor, it's going to be even further away. But it is there. You can download it. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, someone was kind enough to, uh, I can I don't know if it was Ven or Jordan. There, it's not color tagged. But it is there. You can find it. So just click on that. Um, download well, the thing. And yeah, if you run into any well, issues, yeah, on if you if you know. if you read it, if you read it, Brad, that's not going to be in the show notes for the public because that's a super secret demo because they contacted us over email and sent us. This. Yeah, and oh, okay. And, 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 and incidentally, mm-hmm. uh, if you want the demo, that you actually do have to submit an email address and they'll mail you a link. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just have to fill in your email address. Yeah. That's definitely a thing. If you want to go but check it, it out, it is super secret. It is terrifying, terrifyingly, terrifyingly. Show title. <laughs> terrifying. Uh, okay, uh, hipster click, man, because we we need more of this. Well, I mean, this is, this is Sol seven hundred five dot itch dot io. Um, it's a point and click hipster pixel game uh, developed by a bunch of Argentinians, um, and. The, the the idea is it's sort of like a, a retro feeling thing it takes place in the 70s in the town where there's no where there's like one phone and like basically no internet uh you can it is cheap as free at the moment um and it's apparently fully voice mm-hmm. acted which is you know kind of a crapshoot when it comes to internet actors your mileage may vary i mean look at look at our resident voice actor he's done some games that were a thing <laughs> and anyway, anyways, uh, it's a point and click adventure game. Uh, there's not really much else to say about it. It's 80s tastic, um, and you know they put it out on Linux. They didn't necessarily have to do that. Um, so good on them. Uh, apparently, they got a psychedelic and progressive pop rock soundtrack. I think progressive rock and pop rock aren't really compatible genres. I'm curious what that actually sounds like. I didn't bother checking this out because I would have gotten bored of it. Ah, they're all like bullshit terms really anyway. Nice Who speed. cares? <laughs> well, sh- sh- shut up, Mr. No Taste in Music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in there. Much like I wanted to throw this in. Case City, Skylines, or Cities in Motion. All that fun stuff. Not your thing. This is Skyscraper. And no, I'm not going to say anything horrible. What I am going to say, though, is um, it's a fully featured modular 3D real-time building simulator currently out for Linux. And I had not heard about this, but Jordan, you got to make building, a point. Building. Singular. <laughs> building the simulator. Singular. Yeah, it's like, it's like Sim mm-hmm. Tower more. Uh, there's an emphasis on the actual building design yeah. and like <laughs> flow of the floor plans and whatnot. Um, and it, it's, it's very much a simulator, less of a game, but you know, it's definitely a thing. It's cheap as free. Well, I mean, good. P- mm-hmm. people are into this type of stuff. Not, not <laughs> oh, man. And, and empty mirror and Foxy all throughout this past week have been going on and on and on about skinny, uh, skinny skylines, skinny skylines, skinny skylines. Listen, listen, man, it's almost seven o'clock in the fucking morning. My brain is poop. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> now you know how I feel. I, I shut shut up, Pedro. No one cares how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, anyways, speaking speaking of uh, well, he, he a gets a little stabby in the mornings. I I, do. <laughs> I I I I'm I am not a morning person. <laughs> anyways, uh, speaking of uh, hipster pics, I'll have some hipster voxels. Pedro, go fucking blab about Indeed. it. Indeed. So. In case you're not tired, just absolutely fucking had it with the uh, Minecraft voxely style of graphics. Well, here's another game. It's Open Spades. Now, this is one of those that usually I'd look at this, go, right, no, not not even going to bother with it. But I looked at the screenshots and I saw the uh, the one on the bottom left corner. That has the little trees, and you can see the lens flare and the god rays coming through the threes. Not threes, trees. <laughs> um, 
And I was looking at that, and it's like, oh, that actually looks rather nice for a Minecraft voxely style looking game. So I downloaded it, built it, got it running, and yes, the lighting effects look nice. But it, yeah, where you get into game a game itself, it does still look like budget Minecraft. And if you take into consideration that Minecraft at the time was uh, programmer art, why are you deliberately emulating that? I'm well, I mean, uh, kind of to the point, isn't store. this um, emulating something else? This is a, basically a clone of another game, isn't it? Yeah, Blockstorm, pretty much. It's open source uh, Blockstorm. There. I, yeah, I, I, I basically it, named it the Voxely. Yeah, that, that, that's that's about all I can say about it. It builds. Open Spades is a clone of Ace of Spades, not point seven five, which is a free online first person shooter mm-hmm. created by Ben. Whatevs. Um, Listen, there, there's excellent. a significant lack of Lemmy in this game, and that's just inexcusable. Yeah, and it is uh, very much your traditional shooter. You got your capture the flags, you got your death matches, you got your team death matches, you got all of that. Uh, it plays very similar to Counter Strike 1.6 from all the way back then, except instead of doing the their damnedest to get their graphics to look as realistic as possible with the technology they had at the time, like you know, Valve did. No, they decided to go with the Minecraft style of things, and the shooting is very basic, even more so than the models themselves, but the lighting is really good, so I guess that's a plus, right? If that's your Uh, thing. It's there, it exists, much like this, with mobile on the go, because, let's face it, that Smash Z or Steambox, boy, whatever, it's never going to come out. If it does, no, it's it's oh no, it's not. But uh, if you if you got if you got an Odroid lying around, uh, they, there is this little Odroid standy thing that you can buy that can fit some peripherals and a battery. And so someone decided they want to make a little mobile arcade out of it using an Odroid. They give you some instructions here. It is a lot less involved than say that thing we covered last week, which was the um, Pi Switch. Wii U, Wii U, Wii U thing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you don't have, uh, if you need a tiny Wii arcade box Wii. and you don't have a 3D printer, this will certainly get the job done. Personally, not that big a fan of Odroids just because they use a non standard kernel. And I gotta be honest with you, Stereo wor- Boom Bonnet, good band name. This, this is true. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like I said, uh, ha- having worked with Linux kernel unifications for ARM. I would rather see something that uses like standard mainline Linux kernel, but you know it's definitely a thing. It will play your emulator yeah. games perfectly and it fine. Doesn't, There's a little speaker. It doesn't even uh, look uh, anywhere near as sketchy as something our resident uh, Tanzanian representative would do. So if you try to get I, this past TSA, you may just get lucky. May I mean the the thing the thing about Linux Nero is that every inconspicuous thing he makes looks like a bomb mm-hmm. and if he made if he actually went and yep. made a bomb it would look like the most unassuming thing ever it'd be like a pineapple another thing with yeah, this we wouldn't even give it a second look it's like oh okay that's the thing you built neat might be um <laughs> with this business it's like, yeah it's kind of like a, it, it, it's a bitsy teeny witty arcade cabinet but when you think about it i was reading on it's so it's, you can throw android on there then have a media consumption device. So, That's true. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, that would you make sense. You could even have one of those uh, match three arcade things that you have in the pubs around here. You, you, you do your one of um, one of those. Lemmy impression. Yes. You, know, you can just do a little crystal meth, go sit down, chill out. Pretty much. Drink a bottle of Jack. <laughs> and do, it, it, do some it, doodles. Incidentally, a bit of incidentally, incidentally, this is the... This this is a thing that I've learned in Finland. There are freaking video slot machines everywhere, everywhere. Oh yeah, everywhere. You see, everywhere. gambling here is still very much uh, restricted, mm-hmm. but it isn't as much as it is uh, in the U.S. So so you, what, what so what I'm saying what I'm hearing is I should buy a bunch of loot boxes right now and hopefully I will unlock. Oh, them absolutely, the UK. Coming <laughs> up. Yeah, Come, oh, coming up over next here though, in the UK. In, ca- you in case, in case you haven't been paying attention, if you've missed it, this is Manos, the hands of fate. Oh, 
I got a hand it to Defiant Development. They're they're giving us the keys. Really helped bring a big sense of unity. <laughs> yeah, this is Hand of Fate Two by Divine Development, developed on Unity. Pick it up for around uh, thirty of your wet local stinky currencies. What is it? A new <laughs> hero rises to challenge the dealer. Oh, I had a, I had a different image there. And Hand of Fate Two, master a living board game of infinitely replayable quests. Unlock new cards. Build your adventure. Then defeat your foes in brutal real-time combat. Draw your cards, play your hands, and discover your fate. As I said before, this end of skis. This is the chair QA edition. It's where we uh, take a look at some games, play them a little bit, talk about them, maybe maybe give them some QA that they were not given initially, and um, maybe throw some chairs at them. Speaking of chairs, one chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we got our categories. Oh, Doom. Mixed with the working and shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So we do this in a bit of a roundtable where we all talk about our experience with the game. So let's break it down. Ven, how, how, how to make with the working? Well, over here, I'm running it on the Humbuntu 1710 Ryzen 1700 Short Bus Edition with an old crusty 980. Um... No issues whatsoever. Um, I've actually experienced zero fuckery, and that's quite a rarity these days in the land of unity. It's getting better. It's getting better, and I like games like this, games like Hollow Knight. That show, competent developers can make Unity work. Unity's not necessarily bad out of the box by itself. It is, I think, to its fault, just a little too easy to use. So, um, at 1080p, everything on 11 Averaging about 80 to 90 FERPs on this business with the old 980. No complaints there. UHD at 2160p. Everything runs roughly 30, give or take uh, one or two. Nothing to complain about. Uh, and that, again, that's with everything maxed out, man. Yeah, I was I was playing this on the aging Fedora 25 on the uh, 7600HQ and the 960M. And I mean, it's a, it's an anemic little video card and it has to go through Prime. So there's going to be a performance hit. But I was averaging, I, I didn't see it drop below like 45 frames a second on medium, which is good. So uh, I'm, I'm relatively impressed with that. No real issues or slowdowns. I did run into one issue where apparently I hit the magic key combination on the DualShock controller that tried to bring up one of the uh, X window hotkeys. Mm hmm. Uh, but that's not that's not a fault of the games. And to its credit, it, pa it paused the game and let me unfuck it. And unfortunately, it paused just before I got hit by something. So it gave me that brief sense of hope that I could dodge out of the way. <laughs> what, 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 what about what about? Yeah, uh, no, over our, here. Our it, uh, yeah, it ran really, really well. It was holding ninety to a hundred with the uh sixteen hundred, the Ryzen five sixteen hundred and the ten eighty. Uh absolutely no issues. There was some um, graphical fuckery, but I'll get more into that in the uh shiny and sounds. Uh the performance itself was fine. Uh, absolutely no issues. When I first started it I noticed that VSync was on because apparently some developers still think that's a, it's a good idea to default to that. But yeah, it's just uh, the, the options menu is fairly comprehensive. Uh, it's very similar to the first one, but it is uh, it was all also a good thing back then, and it is still a good thing now. So as far as I'm concerned, it gets uh, the full uh, four chairs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure no one had any issues here. So four chairs for mix with the working... Shiny and sounds, yeah, it's it's definitely an improvement over the first. Oh one. hell yeah, man! Uh, I would definitely oh, yeah, say no. mm -hmm. it, it 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 definitely has that sort of hand of fate aesthetic. Uh, you can you can customize your dude now. Um, you can be a dude or a lady or a lady dude or a dude lady. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The game will back your play whatever you want. Um, and the uh, I mean, so there's the addition of like the David Warner ass voice actor. He sounds always like super shitty when he's like, oh, yeah, you rolled bad on a die or you picked the wrong card. Oh, you're a fucking idiot for, you know, random chance. Um, the, the the rest of the soundtrack is mainly just grunts. And um, I, can't, I, I don't recall if the companions actually talk. That may have just been a sleep depri deprivation <laughs> hallucination. 
It's it's certainly possible. I got to agree um, with you, man. Graphically, it absolutely does look next generation compared to the original Hand of Fate. But I, I think it's very fair to point out that the original looked a bit janky. So, Pedro, am I correct when saying set your expectations accordingly? For those listening on audio, yeah, it's a massive overhaul. Oh, yeah. Does it look like a AAA game? Oh, mm. yeah. It, it, lo- it looks like an A. No, no it doesn't. <laughs> Like an A, a minus, it looks a plus, a, like a very, very good looking indie game, and I have absolutely no issues with the um, just how good they uh, made the post processing and all of the advanced graphical effects. Those r- look really nice. There is one issue that I started to notice because my eyes are very uh, peculiar when it comes to flickering textures. Mm -hmm. And there is some Z fighting with some of the cart textures that causes that very same weird flickering effect. This is true. So my eyes were immediately drawn to that. Yeah. I I guess you should put out, I mean, definitely when you look... My eyes were immediately drawn to that. When you look at the map, you hit the X button to get the overlay, you will definitely see that no matter what you're running it on. That that's just mm-hmm. there. That's something I have to think that yeah. they knew was there, and uh, all, all the areas that when you're dealing with the dungeon crawling and you're dealing with the card master, the cards are whatever you want to call them. That looks great. That looks so much better than the original Hand of Fate with some some of the most jankiest mm-hmm. animation rigging for that poor guy. I mean, he was almost comically laughable. Uh, that, that that looks really good now. I mean, I'm digging that aesthetic. The fighting areas, uh, oh, you're doing the combat infinitely better. Still, they look the same. They, 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 they got a graphical <laughs> there, overhaul. There, there's, there's a lot more variety in the places where you can fight, though. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the maps are a little different. Um, and I mean, yeah, it, lo- it looks about as well as you could hope for an indie team. I mean, I'm not expecting. I don't, I don't, I don't know some alien isolation level graphics, but you know it's still good. All right, it's three chairs across the board. Three yeah. chairs for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. about, I don't, I don't know, Pedro. How about some control? Well, uh, controls. Uh, I have to. I was looking when I was filling in the show notes. I saw that Ven was uh, complaining about the uh, no camera movement. Yeah, no. There's still no camera movement. All you're getting is that fixed perspective. Uh, okay, when all right. You go into combat. I so, had I, I had to go test this because on the Steam controller, which mm-hmm. I used, there there is technically camera movement by about yeah much to the left and to no, the right. No, you might as well not bother. It's mostly a su- a suggestion. I, I will have you know that I bothered and... three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. It's, and, it really becomes I, 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 a I, thing when you're getting a lot of attacks coming from off screen, and you see like these bits of glow around the screen. Oh, you you're, 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 you're just going to eat a shit sandwich if you're at the top of the screen and everybody's at the bottom. You're like, <laughs> fuck. Now I got to now I got to do ro- yep. roll dodge <laughs> until I can get them all back in view. That that's a legitimate issue, I do believe. Yep. Now, one one thing yes, that kind of peeved and me was um, the 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 queuing system because because I I noticed this and I noticed uh, you you put this in the notes as well. Mm-hmm. But it seems like they really don't want you to button mash, and they've done this in such a way where everything has no, like this no, wind up animation, and um and sometimes you can land blocks and sometimes you can duck out of the way, but it's really inconsistent because you think no, fuck you, I dodged that, or I blocked that, and they're like, no, you can eat a bag of dicks, and a big mm-hmm. old hammer to the face. You know, to the point, yeah. I, I and would... and it's absolutely a thing. <laughs> to the point where I, I would say that it has definitely not registered blocks and rolls. Oh, I, yeah. I, I no think, matter I how think hard the intended you're pushing strategy down here, on that though, button. is they, they, they want you to wait into... And I, 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 I figured this out after, like, dying for the umpteenth time, and they're like, okay, I'm going to be patient. But if you sort of, like, wait in the middle of some bad guys, and you wait for them to attack you, and then you hit the then you hit the parry, then you can get one attack in, and then you just wait again, and the, it makes the fights take forever, but you can reliably land those mm-hmm. blocks. 
Well, but I'll agree with you with that, patient. but yep. the blocks are one thing. I've seen it not register rolls because, as I'll talk about in the fun section, rolls is my primary attack. And I, I've had it just straight <laughs> up not register a roll a couple of times to the point to where I yeah. plugged the Steam controller in physically and was able to reproduce that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, they are using it's one of the things that because when you put that in the notes, the controls are under the I'm like, are they? So I went in and I deliberately started to look for what they were doing to with the controls. And even though you're hammering on that button and your character just it, it isn't doing what you're telling it to, that's because the game actually queues up the actions as you press the buttons. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing because there are plenty of games that do that. It's just the cutoff point in the queue uh, and which buttons are queued or done instantly that at certain points it feels rather arbitrary uh, where that cutoff point is. I guess, like Jordan already mentioned, this is very much to prevent uh, button mashing, but it doesn't really work as well as you'd expect. Yeah, it it often ends up just being an exercise in frustration when you're you're trying to make the smart play and then you just get fucked because oh well yeah. I I hit block a little too soon after I hit attack, and it's 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 unfortunate but i mean the controls are otherwise relatively tight there are no real issues this this is just like an issue specifically with the combat system <laughs> and how it's implemented the queuing mm -hmm. the, in, incidentally the queue, there's also a queue on the menu system because if you spam like make uh, cook yes. food at the campsite thing like um it'll 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 lock you in there until it goes through every single yep. thing every single button press which can so be irritating be because you just like, oh shit, how much food did I, oh, I bought too much food and I'm still spending and my health's all the way up. God damn it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, all, all, all said and done, I think we all agree this, this gets about a three chair for the controls. And let's put a bow on it. We got the, we got the chair spectrum for the fun section. So who, who wants to take the lead? Pedro. Okay. Uh, well. Like the first time around with the original End of Fate, I liked this one. But then again, I kind of already suspected that I would. <laughs> so no news there. Uh, it's uh, For me, it's like they took everything that made the original Hand of Fate what it was, and they expanded on it. Uh, there are more mini games. there's a much bigger variety in mechanics, and they, the deck building aspect, which I guess is the big selling point of this one because it's not just Arkham Combat and it's got some more things to it. The deck building is kind of the meat of the game. It's how you progress through any of the given adventures as it were. Um, now you get uh, more weapon types instead of being just locked to the single hander and shield. Uh, you get like two handers, you get the dual wields, uh, there's a lot of variety there. You also get a companion, which is a little NPC that goes around and helps you. There's a bigger map variety. It's, uh, one of the adventures, and I think it's the Emperor, that gives you some more open world-ish type of map where you can you have just a big board of cards that you can go around in whatever way you choose to. And the combat just feels a lot better. They improved on the combat significantly. It's still not perfect, but they've improved significantly. And every yeah. time you take a swing and you hit an well, enemy, the, you the, feel the, like the, you did. I, again, the, the biggest strike I have against the combat in this game is the queuing system because it just fucks you. And it's a thing you got you, you yeah. can get used to. And I've I've gotten used to it. I can I can now reliably block and dodge about 75% of the time, but it's that remaining 25% is still gonna fuck you and yeah I, I i really do appreciate the much more comprehensive map types as well the uh the emperor was good the the the, the little murder mystery thing was kind of fun that you got to play through uh they, they've yep. added like escort quests uh the uh, the lovers is really annoying because you get it's useless and you have to the and it's not just you have to win the fights. You have to keep him alive and he will keep getting kidnapped and every time you have to make a detour and he eats all your food and oh god, it just doesn't fucking end. Um, the 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 weapon variety I I feel isn't isn't as good as I would hope, because re really what it does is it just changes up your wind up time. And 
Uh, there, there are different blocking strategies when it comes to different enemies and whatnot. If like certain certain enemies basically require you to have a shield if you want to defend yourself, like the musketeers will just fuck you up otherwise. Um, but uh, I, I feel that they they've won from one type of weapon to just three, and that didn't really do all that much for me. Didn't fulfill that sort of hope. Uh, the fame mechanic is interesting too, where they give you they give you items that you need to accomplish certain things within map before you can use them. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure how I feel about that, just because you're already it's already a crapshoot. There are certain, uh, what weapons uh, there, there are certain quests that also use the fame uh, mechanic. Yeah, uh, you can only do uh, a certain quest if you have X amount of fame to do it successfully. Well, there's also issues with like the big ice hammer that becomes less effective the more fame you have. It's like the humble mm-hmm. hammer. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I just don't use uh, that one. That's the yeah, the humble hammer. So here's the, what the, I'm the going humble, to say about this business. Hammer. The biggest issue for me with this game is the entire combat fighting system. While improved, it is basically nothing more than straight up hack and slash, you know, which for me, that means it's fun for a few minutes, but it doesn't have any depth. Therefore, it becomes a chore. And it especially becomes a chore once you realize that you can roll your ass out of any situation. Roll is your biggest weapon. I can use any fucking weapon and end up, except for the timed missions, Time missions, you might get skull fucked and you got to play with. I don't bother with a shield anymore. I don't care what weapon I have because I can roll out of it, take a hit, roll back, roll spamming. Works 100% of the time. Like, I have no issues. It's like, oh, you got to do a fight. And I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. It's going to take me four or five minutes, but I won't get touched. Uh, what it needs, the fighting system, I mean, it needs some combos. It needs some type of attack progression and maybe some AI. Maybe you guys notice this. That the AI, a better AI, because the AI right now herds like sheep. When you fuck a little bit, they'll all wave back mm-hmm. together and move away from you. Then one guy will run out, and I'm like, all right, I'll take that one out now. And I'll hammer him out, and then all that. And when it comes down to dodging the bad guys with ranged attacks, again, just roll out of the way. You're done with that. I think they got really close with this because that's the one thing I like about this game. Because let's face it, I don't like this genre. I don't like dungeon crawling. I don't like losing all my shit after I've gotten it. Um, They got really close with this. So damn close with this. But every time I get fucked by the RNG bullshit, I know some people get a raging clue when that happens to them. Like, "Mm, yeah, I'm going to come back for more. I'm like, fuck this noise. it's it's no it's never fun, but it, at least it creates some variety and it creates a little bit of tension. And I can I can definitely appreciate that. And it's it it makes it so that you can uh, replay missions and not have the exact same experience each mm-hmm. time. But the one thing I did like about the uh, car, the improved card mechanic is there's a lot more interesting card synergy that you can do. Um, so it, 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 with oh, like yeah. uh, the the armor of gluttony and the food ring and whatnot, where you can you can get like you can become like super tanky really really quickly, uh, and that that kind of that kind of stuff is interesting to me. They're 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 trying to leverage what subsystems they have to make a more rich gameplay experience. Um, they are. They I, I did a good job. Yeah. I'm going to say like for a dungeon crawling game. Mm-hmm. This is really the only way you would ever keep my attention is by throwing in some actual combat. And they didn't go full Arkham on it. Kind of wish they did. But I will say this. I mean, I've played it three or four hours, which that might as well be 500 when it comes to this type of game because it is absolutely not my thing. This would be like me saying, I played a turn-based strategy game for four hours. You just, it's not my thing. I can't pretend it's my thing. It needs a little work. If they get the combat more up to snuff, I know a lot of people, listen, if you just like the dungeon crawling aspects of this, that shit's solid. All right. hundred percent on that. But when you, yeah. when you're throwing me into the combat that becomes that repetitive, there, there's just not to it. Uh, you, you know, the guy that where you have to hit B to actually break through his skills. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, so the happy when he shows up. Have to keep on hitting me. I'm so happy when he shows up because I'm like, oh, I actually got something to do that's a little challenging. Instead or, of just or, or the, uh, the the Bola guys are also really annoying. Oh, I just roll out of their way, man. Uh, no, when when, yeah, when, when they show up on mass, that's the, the point the where you just roll spam. 
Rolls Bam. Yeah. I, 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 have, Roll, I, I, I can almost, I will yeah. bet money I can go into almost any encounter and not get touched. Now, I've got it down to the point. Yeah, no. If you yeah. get the uh, and, the roll down, you're basically untouchable. You know, and once you focus on attacks perfect. and you're not worried about blocking, all you're worried about is rolling out of the way. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah, but but for for me, yeah. that that just becomes super boring. Oh, it is super boring. But at, yeah. at, at that at that point, I would rather not play. I play um, games to win. I play games to have fun, <laughs> and you know, win, win, winning winning is a part of that. Yeah, but if for me, is though, too easy then. For me, this one isn't about winning because this is this borrows a lot from the roguelike genre. It's what you'd call a roguelite uh, with real time ish combat. So that to me is just an improvement over the whole roguelike roguelite genre. It's just better, but it's still not perfect because there's the texture flickering issue, there's the control cue issue, and the combat. As much as they improved it, and they have a lot, mm-hmm. it's still not ideal. And it, uh, I want I, I, to see I would, them improve on that. I would like to see. I have. I would like to see a version that no issues like the having Mad Max fun style with combat. this game. Mad Max style uh, combat. I, I think for yeah. me, you could have completely sold this to me. And listen, this is armchair development. I understand this, guys. But if you're going to go for version, you know, Hand of Fate three which I absolutely believe you should. Plus they're going to be adding an endless mode to this. Maybe you yeah. could work on this. Mm-hmm. You need to bring somebody. They also had it on the first one. You need to bring somebody from outside because you, it's like you're doing uh, what you think combat system should be, but you, you, you can't, you can't nail it. You're trying, you're getting better, but that, yeah, Mad Max, the Arkham system, man. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that we need something similar to that. Massive improvement over the first one, but that, that yeah, game's got to get stepped up if you're going to get somebody like me, which, listen, I'm not your target demo. Absolutely not. Twenty nine ninety nine. I wouldn't have risked it on this one, but you were kind enough to send it, and I put my time into it. Rather enjoyed it. Just kind of wish the combat was a bit better because that would keep me in the game is what I'm saying. If I had some, Mm -hmm. you know, something like a progression system, let me unlock some combos and additional moves, things that I can apply. Make make those cards more powers. Give the weapons additional powers. Make this not Dark Souls and force you to roll around everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so if we're, we're going to slap some chair ratings on it, I'll give, I give it a solid three chairs. This, this is a good attempt. I, I had fun playing it. Um, but what about you guys? Uh, I'll give it two. I'm not going to give it one because again, you, you get almost four hours or four hours out of me and that that's unheard of for dungeon crawler. I'll give it two. Yeah. I'm going to give it four chairs because, uh, I will find... I will find a time to play this game because I really like the first one and this one's just the first one, but better with more variety. So yeah, no, you got all me. Right, all so right. Four chairs for me. So, so, so that's, that's three chairs for fun and tally that all up three chairs. Finally for hand of fate two. uh, they'll wrap up the chair QA edition mm-hmm. guys, fix your combat. Maybe, maybe take a look at Mad Max, uh, for some inspiration coming up yeah. next Ooh. though. Okay, okay, go ahead. Or, 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 I mean, do, do you have some final thoughts? I, I was going to say, I mean, th- this is like a weird... I, I Yeah, I do want to say this. Is... I, I was going to say, or just focus, you know, take out, take out the actual combat section. Because some people would argue that you can always avoid combat or minimize it to the point. Some people might really like that, because I know some people absolutely see the having to do the combat is, ah, oh, I don't want this in my RNG fuck me over game. Uh, I just want the card aspect and maybe focus on that. Re- maybe, maybe hand of fate bogus detour where you do like a turn-based thing, Final Fantasy style. Hey man, hand of fate be- go. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of already is. I'm, 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 with the, uh, I'm, I'm the trying to think of something nasty to call the, the turn-based version. <laughs> All right, take us out but, of here. Uh, 
All right, coming up next, can you perform? Are you capable of it? We like to hear from you. We like to hear from you a lot. And this week, you guys kind of, you know, dropped the ball. We have just the one tiny bit of hate mail. What the hell, man? I did. I do know that Monster Cameron tried to uh, troll me. He didn't uh, try, son. No, 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 no. He didn't try. He fucking <laughs> hooked you right in the jaw and pulled your ass right in. I, I, I saw those YouTube comments. You were writing them back. You got trolled, <laughs> son. There's no trying to this. Yeah, no, I got roped in. Every now and again, I like to engage with him just to keep him going because he has his good moments. That wasn't a particularly good one, but I figured, you know what? I'll indulge you. I'll see what you come up with. And at one point, he just stopped making sense and ignoring reality like he's off to do. So, meh. But hey, Monster Cameron, if you're watching this, I know you have an A game. So bring it next time, okay? All right. If you'd like to get in touch with us, by all means, do bring your A-game to the contact forum. That's linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button, fill in the form, make sure to pick LGC Weekly for a little drop down anything. Or if you'd like to ask Jordan about some of that relationship advice, you can do that too. Just make sure you actually give us a, le- well, not even a legitimate email address, just something that resolves. Otherwise, Ven will have to go through the spam queue and look for your thing. Uh, and if you're a game developer, make sure you send us some keys, so a build that we can share among all of us, something like that. Because if we can't play your game and you're just throwing random advertising spammy bullshit in there, we're going to make fun of you and you don't want that. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to throw one in for you um, before we get into it. I, I think it was yesterday, Friday, I get, I get a notification on Twitter. I'm not calling out names. I'm just saying. You can probably go back and put 2 and 13 together on this one. They're like, hey, we're about to release our game on Steam. And they had replied, a couple of us, uh, that deal with Linux gaming. And I wrote back, congratulations. I was being all nice. I was in a good mood. It was rare. Um, It's like, Mm -hmm. good on you guys. Uh, Would you like to take a look at our game? And it's like, if you want to leave your game for submission, here's a link to our contact form that clearly says, if you would like to submit your game, please provide a copy for each host. Clearly says that. You can't miss it these days. And I didn't say that. I just gave them a link, assuming they had some level of reading comprehension. I was wrong because they did send it an email saying, hey, our game's coming out. Uh, We would be happy to send you a key. Kind of like free. We'll give you one, which immediately puts my braid in. You know what? I'm not going to talk about this because you you just told me you can't read. And, And here's the thing. They didn't include a key. They said, write us back or write me back. Nope. Winky face. Um, fuck right off. <laughs> Hashtag LGC cares. Okay. We, we, we have competent, competent developers and publishers that can read. Mm-hmm. And they're brilliant and we love them. Yep. But um, let's get to oh, yeah. this little bit of hate mail, which is actually, you know, we only get one little bit. But it's not that little. It's kind of a wall of text. Uh, yeah, from Kalsta, he says, oh, yeah. I don't wish to provoke Distro Wars. So which window manager DE is most suited Too to late. reliably performant gaming on Linux? I've seen this topic tap- tackled on Pharonix and other sources, and I'm intrigued that environmental compl- uh, complexity does not necessarily equate to detrimental performance. However, these comparisons do not take into account other factors such as screen tearing and the like. So, tapping the collective wisdom of the who have been there, done that. What is the best combo for smooth, fast Linux gaming? Money. Uh, money. Compton. Throw money at the problem. <laughs> yep. Yeah, buy, buy, much, buy a 1080, yeah. <laughs> buy the i9 for like 2,000 uh, bucks, get like the fastest RAM you can, <laughs> NVMe drives, Optane drives, and then just like 
fill it full of gasoline and light a match and <laughs> put it, put it inside. No, I, I mean, I mean <laughs> watch it all. I, I, honestly, like you're not gonna window window manager and and whatnot are not gonna be the make or break nope. thing here for um for performance on Linux. Yeah, you might you might see a minor performance hit here or there. But really, uh, really, it's not going to be causing you much grief unless you're using something really weird like rat poison. Um, you, you're probably going to want to use Compton as your compositor <laughs> awesome. for sure. Yeah, uh, and beyond beyond that, I mean, just pick whatever you like. That that's really one of the big things that. Okay, you know, if we're like in 2005. And everything's open GL, and if you're really lucky, you had a dual core system. And let's face it, graphic cards weren't all that, they weren't the hot shit back in the day, even like the expensive ones. Yeah, okay. Maybe like, all right, I, I'm just running a win, uh, window manager instead of a desktop manager. It's like, well, you could legitimately say, okay, well, KDE has a 7% performance hit versus using just straight X to launch a game. 2017, if you have a remotely, and I'm talking like an old 8150 AMD from six years ago, mm -hmm. uh, don't don't waste uh, waste your time, and unless that is a hobby of yours, like digging, because you might get 2 to 3%, and if that's going to make and break your experience... Not even that. I, I'm trying... I'm we're playing in Vin's imagination land, bitch. Uh, <laughs> well, so many sock uh, puppets. So many sock uh, puppets. Most of you probably won't remember, but a while back I did post some um I did post some comparison screenshots of Unigen Heaven running in a bunch of different operating systems. I tested XFCE, I tested Enlightenment, I tested KDE, I tested uh, uh, GNOME 2, and uh, something else. And KDE managed to eke out the best uh, average FPS, and it had almost no visible tearing. This was back in the, the old KDE 4 point something days of past 4.9 i think it was 4.10 or 4.11 something like that but yeah you do mention tearing and yes that is a concern but if you have an nvidia card just make sure you have the forceful composition pipeline thing enabled in the drivers that's all you need uh, regardless of whichever um uh, the sub environment window manager you're running it will get rid of 99% of the tearing. There are some games every now and then that will still show it, but those are few and far between. But the performance itself nowadays is between, like Ven already said, between 1% and 3% at most. So basically it, it, pick whichever one you prefer. I like KDE because of all the advanced window configurations that you can do. Uh, Ven prefers uh, XFCE for its simplicity. Jordan uses either XFC or mate. So yeah, no, it's basically down to your preference. Do you want simplicity or do you want complexity? Because the performance is going to be very much on par with one another. The moral of the story here is just install windows. Yep. Clearly. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> fucking hell. Cause on that bombshell, let's go ahead and cue the music. You can always find us around nine 30 Eastern time, unless we've stated otherwise. Hey, if you've listened this long, come join Pedro and myself, Tuesday, because we're fucking stuck. Uh, we got a new series rocking out with Synergy called <laughs> Meet the Freemans. Yeah, we need help. And we, we, we're in a fucking Groundhog Day scenario, ladies and gentlemen. We need your help to sort that out because we're getting bored of getting killed. And we're playing Half-Life 2 co-op Synergy. You probably own mm -hmm. Half-Life 2. Synergy's free to download. But we're playing that shit on hard mode. And it turns out hard mode whole different fucking game as we're slowly learning if you want to talk to me i'm at vin stone on twitter vin stone uh on google plus all around town in that business i'm jordan swung i'm going to be back in toronto in the coming weeks we're going to be doing some serious sam if you want to play some of that on thursday you're more than welcome to join us we usually start about seven eastern standard time uh you can find me 
prattling on and on from sleep deprivation at the Burning Fool, and plus just... Uh... Yes, I am Pedro Mateos, on the other hand. I, at this point, should be used to the sleep deprivation, but I'm still not, basically, because I get up at 6.30 every single morning in the weekdays. But hey, if you'd like to shout at me, do it at any time of day. I'll get back to you whenever I can. It's plus Pedro Mateos on Google Plus or at an accounted for on Twitter. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we we learned that um, Finlandia slowly but surely zaps Canadians' power. You, you can see him. Damn through. you, Finlands! <laughs> I will be free of you. Let's do some credits. Goodbye, Finlandia. You've been real. Oh yeah. <laughs> until he comes for back. For two weeks. Yeah, for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, until he comes back. <laughs> Oh God. man! We no, look at that. all the them party patrons. Jet lag. Jet lag. Oh, you should be sorted. So, by is this it, going to be a two-hour episode? No, there, 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 there's some. This is of going your... to be a two-hour episode, isn't it? Uh, nope. There's definitely some of your rambling. I'm going to cut out. <laughs> so it's going to be a thirty-minute episode. Got it. Ten minutes, most. <laughs> it's, it's it's like a thirty-second soundbite. Listen, man, after like three hardware reviews from Pedro, I, yeah, it's second nature to like trim him down. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's the equivalent of it's the LGC equivalent <laughs> of you suffer by, by fucking napalm death. <laughs> you don't even get it's that. It's great. Joke, I love Shut the fuck hardware up. reviews because Van gets to suffer and Jordan gets to suffer. So it's nice. <laughs> hey, man, uh, that's all we're saying. If you want to go back and uh, see the show in its full format, that's what the Uncut series is. Bigger, longer, yep. and uncut. Patreon's there. Uh, if you're kicking us a few shekels, you can go and, uh, well, you can put yourself through that. Bye-bye. <laughs> Five dudes.